Hello. When I was looking back over my Tarot play, playlist, I realized that in um, talking about the Minor Arcana, I talked about all of the suits except for the Wands, the first suit of the Minor Arcana. So, one, so today I'm going to talk about the Wands. And as always, I have to start by apologizing for my production values. Uh, yeah, Nobody watches my videos just to find out the right way to do that. But in any event, Onto the wands. So I'm going to use, uh, I'll use three decks. I will primarily focus on this deck of mine. Uh, and I will also refer to the Rider Weight deck of the wands because this is one that most people are familiar with. And I will just make a brief showing to my other deck, but the brief showing because most people, this isn't, this isn't all that helpful just to see a bunch of wands. It's more helpful to see you know, pictures. And I'll also look at Crowley's deck, which is uh, more abstract, but also, uh, you know, quite lovely. And, you know, actually, really, this is Lady Frida Harris is the author, not is the artist, not Crowley. And Pamela Coleman Smith is the uh, artist, not uh, Arthur Waite. Okay, so wands represent fire. And as fire, they represent energy. The element uh, in the four sort of esoteric elements, fire is the first. Uh, it's fire, then water, then air, then earth. Um, so fire, again, is energy. Um, so the wands uh, don't, as the wands progress through the, um, through the one through ten, the pip cards, um, they go from the uh, ace, which is like lighting a match. This is like, this is like primal energy, the idea you have. It's, but it's more than an idea. It's not a thought. It's a, it's a motivation. It's a drive. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's more than just a, it's, it's a whole thinking and way of being and, and knowing and this is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. This is where the energy is taking me. That is the ace. Um, but then, as it goes through, that, unlike the earth sign or the water signs where they like kind of the development, uh, wands tend to get a little bogged down, although that's a water image. But as they progress from 1 to 10, and just we'll just skip ahead and look at 10, uh, 10, 10 is, you know, kind of weighted down, like that idea, it got kind of... Uh, has become more difficult, has become more burdened, and has, in some sense, either has become a burden, is something that requires tremendous effort to kind of bring to fulfillment. So that's that's like the, the rough Cliff Notes version. The wands, the energy, as that moves through ace from ace to ten, it tends to get more weighted. Now that's simple, and that's not the whole thing. But before I go into each card, Again, I want to suggest that as you do readings yourself and as you pick cards for yourself, as you try to understand the meanings of the cards, think of the metaphors and the ideas that we associate with fire. There's the obvious being on fire. There is uh, having a fiery personality. There's lighting a match. There's um, smoldering. There's the burning ring of fire that is uh, the famous Johnny Cash song about love. Um, the, people talk about like burning up or burning down the house or um, burning a hole through it or light, burning the candle at both ends. Um, these are all these kinds of metaphors. And also think of other words like ashes or embers or as I think I already said smoldering. Um, what happens when fire and air meet? You can have a lot of hot air. It can be combustible. The fire goes higher. Fire and water, it can put out the fire. Uh, it can create steam. Fire and earth, you know, can create a sort of scorched earth. Or uh, perhaps it could also be like a home fire, um, you know, in a, in a hearth. So these kinds of metaphors are um, important to think of as you look at the cards, either that you pick for yourself or in the context with other cards, um, in doing a reading. All right, so let's see. We started with the ace, and I have already misplaced one of the cards. Um, okay, well, so here we go. There's two other aces, and I think, uh, here we go. There's that ace, 
and, um, and there's that one, which is very austere. But um, these two are pretty austere, but these two, you can see there's a certain kind of like energy, a certain kind of like, uh, this suggests electricity, a certain kind of uh, force or power or oomph. All right, so what happens when that, that's the one? So the two is when the two energy of the ideas, when there's two poles, those, that represents possibilities. Uh, so first you have an idea, and then there are different ways that that idea could express itself. So here you have the person like rubbing sticks together to light a fire. Uh, that is, the two sticks have the potential to create fire. Um, and here they have a man looking out to sea, holding a globe. Uh, that, but the idea being that, you know, a, a venture can be embarked upon. Um, the, the, uh, Crowley calls it dominion. Not really sure where to go with that one just right now in this quick, <laughs> quick version. All right, so first, so then you have the two, and the two is possibilities. The threes, as I have said in the videos about three, three is the first form. One is a point, two is a line, polarity. Three, you create a triangle. So, the, so you have potential, then you create a plan. So here you have the person making a plan. That's what you do with your idea when you try to put it into something. And uh, Crowley calls it virtue, which, again, we're not going to go there right now. <laughs> That's a whole different way of looking at them. Because so, so after you have a plan, then you start to progress upon the plan, and then you get something of a resting place. I like to think of the four of wands as like, well, you're taking a hike up a mountain, or up a big mountain, and you reach like a meadow with a great view, a good place to have lunch. Like This is a good place to relax, enjoy, take a look at the view, see where you are, feel some satisfaction in what you've accomplished, and understand that this is a really great place to rest, relax, and enjoy, but you are not going to stay there forever. It is, um, you know, it's a place with limitation. It, it, it has that that limitation, which has nothing negative associated with it. It's just, there's a certain kind of security there, but you're gonna keep going. So the fives of every suit are the most troublesome. Fives are always the, uh, where we have some conflict. And uh, Crowley then calls it strife and has a kind of conflictive looking. And here you can see in both my deck and, and in the deck that we call the Rider Waite, um, you can see that this, this is where the person gets frustrated. So if you think of, the, here there is a, um, built a, there's a little bit of a structure, that kind of uh, gazebo-like place, uh, hoop, uh, uh, where you can rest, where you can stay. And then you get mad and you just break it down. You know, it's like, this isn't working out, this isn't the way I want it, this is like, meh. And usually, often there's somebody else that you're also getting angry at, which uh, this aptly shows that there's, it's not a happy situation. The fives are followed by the sixes, which in all of the suits is the most beneficial card. So if you think of it like you've kind of passed the middle point, but in some sense that rise to the top is always, it's almost even better than getting to the top. When you know that things are moving forward and there's a kind of like pleasure and ease and you've gotten over the, you've gotten through the strife and you are now at a place where you feel good and everybody feels good about you and you are recognized as successful and you're getting a little bit of like applause and, uh, and people, people are honoring you and, and seeing you as something, something valuable and good victory is uh, Crowley's name for it. And uh, yeah, so the six is a good one. The six is where your ideas are seen as something that makes you special, something that is uh, valuable to the world and for which you are honored. So sevens, next, this, you still have to move on from that. Like, you can't just stay there. And especially with the wands, there's no just, like, you know, uh, sitting on your... Uh, they, they have a lot of movement in the wands, so you're not just going to sit there and relax and enjoy. So sevens represent something hidden. So if you take the, take the six and um, assume that this energy is going to keep going. In order to keep it going, you have to bring a hidden energy out of yourself in order to continue to fight against whatever forces might be 
com- beginning to work against you beginning because again these are the wands it started the that initial drive pushes you forward really well really far really fast or pretty far and fast but um, eventually you encounter obstruction and at the seven you pull out your secret energy in order to continue to fight for what you believe in so um Valor is Crowley's name for it, and um, even and I think even he sort of agrees with that sort of that sense, where the the you the wand the the internal resource of energy you bring out to fight for what you believe in. Then the eight uh, be, is the four doubled, and that the wands don't really deal with that too well. You can consider it electricity. Uh, uh, Crowley calls it swiftness, but it, it is definitely like suddenly something else comes into the picture. Sometimes the eight comes up for an affair. It comes up for something unexpected and you know sort of exciting usually, not often not very long lived, but um, out of the blue something comes. It can be good or bad. It doesn't. It really doesn't have to be bad, but it is again sudden, unexpected, exciting. Uh, when it's upside down, it's even more fleeting, and it can potentially be a little bit more of like a bull blow to the head. There's definitely that quality to it. The nines, so you've gotten through that, and with the nines, we have uh, once again, you bring out the, um, the, the Crowley calls it strength. So with the nines, there's kind of two ways of looking at it, and you can see it well in um, uh, the Rider Weight deck. Either this person is embattled, see he's got a, 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 a bandage on, and he is, uh, there's these, you know, looming uh, sticks, um, and he's like wondering if he's going to have to fight them. Or he is, you know, able to protect himself, but like on a journey, taking his walking stick as he goes by and sees all the other possible energies. So most of the time I find that sometimes there's a little bit of a sense of you have to protect yourself, like watch out for yourself, take care of yourself. But usually there's also a sense of like, you're going to have to find something else here to bring into the picture. So get off your butt and go look for it. It doesn't mean you have to leave everything else behind. See, there's all the other wands there still in the picture. But more has to be brought into this picture, so get out there and look for it. Sometimes it indicates travel as well. And then we have the 10, which universally the 10 is here oppression. That's not a bad way to look at it. The the 10, either you, again, you can see it as this person, the energy has reached you know, it's maximum expression, but it, it, here it still is an idea. It hasn't moved into the earth element yet. So it's not like you have like the full physical thing there. You are still working with the idea and you've been working with this idea, with this, this, and again, it's more than an idea. It's an energy and the energy has been going for some time. And at this point it is, um, there's a lot to do. So either it is usually thought of as um, it's kind of like this ongoing oppression um, and burden, or the idea too can be that this is like the last big um, heave that you have to do to get the, the all the sticks that you've gathered uh, back home. Um, and often it's a little bit of both. Uh, reversed, it suggests that um, Sometimes the burden isn't quite as bad, but also it can be more difficult to bring it to bring the whole thing to conclusion. I will go over the court cards in a separate video. And um, again, the cards reversed tend to show um, the energy weakened or sometimes um, uh, sometimes um, the neg- the negative of what it usually means, although, in a in a less um, in a sort of s- subtle way, like for example, there can be difficulty coming up with a plan, or the plan isn't feasible. Um, you're not really kind of getting to that resting place with this, or there's the potential uh, are the potentials, the possibilities are not really manifest or weak, or or not really kind of coming together. Um, and again, you know, if it, if it's uh, the this, then then it, then it could be kind of like. Um, low-level, passive-aggressive 
fighting. And of course, the Six of Wands, the Six of Wands reversed would be like not quite getting the attention that you want. And the Seven of Wands would be, is usually more like an ongoing, like you're getting exhausted from having to like keep fighting for something. All right, I will talk about the court cards in another video. Talk to you later. Bye.